Hello friends, I hope this finds you well. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about a very special gentleman, uh, also the author of a book that I read. The book is called Freefall. Just picked it up in a, in a charity shop one day and um, had quite an effect on me. It's a story of someone who, who's not got an identical story to me by any means, but with, there's a few parallels. We've both been in the elite forces. Uh, myself, the, the Royal Marines, as you probably gathered by now, this gentleman in, in the parachute regiment and then the SAS. We're both skydivers, um, both pilots, and the clincher, we've both experienced severe uh, psychiatric illness so mental mental health uh, to a level I should say kind of above your your sort of routine depression and anxiety and that that sort of stuff not not that I'm putting anyone you know anyone else's challenges down but I mean like pretty pretty serious stuff now it's a story of Charles Nish or Nish Bruce and I'll tell you how it came about that I came to be doing this video I read this book like I said it had an effect on me so I'll read I'm just going to dive straight in and read the first part of the book so spoiler alert if you haven't read this this book but if you probably haven't read it by now you may be not going to 34 years ago in the time before I went mad, a man looked down from the edge of space. Joe Kittinger, or Kittinger Jr., a US Air Force captain, pulled himself upright, shuffled forwards and stepped from a balloon gondola 100,000 feet above New Mexico. He looked like an overstuffed teddy bear in his life support suit but without it, in the upper limits in, of our atmosphere, his blood would have boiled and his organs exploding. Within seconds of leaving the gondola, he's reached a speed of 614 miles an hour. He fell for another four minutes before his canopy opened. The longest freefall parachute descent in history. So the author of this book, Tom, the SAS chap, starts off his book. He's going to replicate this feat, uh, reproduce this feat, except he's going to do it from space. So a little bit like uh, the Felix Baumgartner stunt, where he took the balloon up into space and then you know, jumped out. And uh, I'm sure many of you saw it. Many of you saw the video. Obviously, it's on YouTube if you haven't. Now, um, let's just go to a few photos here. What, what, why did I feel a, 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 you know, an infinity with this story? Let's have a look. So there's the book cover. I think this was a, a German version. Fritz Fall, free fall. Don't think the, yeah, I don't think the the English cover has got the the wing dagger on it and this is uh, Charles or Niche and uh, that was me we, we both flew Cessnas uh, at least at one stage or another uh, I've actually got the shirt ripped off my back here you can't see it they cut the back out of my shirt that's what they do in the states when you get your pilot license they cut your they cut your shirt um there's me flying over florida niche actually flew i think it's from the united states back to the uk via greenland and iceland which over that amount of water is pr a pretty brave thing to do again we share passion uh for skydiving although i won't pretend i had the 30 thousand jumps that niche had in his logbook which is 
any skydive will tell you is is a phenomenal a phenomenal amount even highly experienced skydivers can have two two thousand jumps this this gentleman had thirty thousand there we go skydive you get to do it folks just do it if, if, if it's something you want to do get go to florida do it for cheap you, you just have to do it it's great fun um i'm with mario here mario's stoned off his box um which is something quite a few of the skydivers in in uh florida didn't have a problem with doing that one of the skydivers i jumped with used to take a bottle of tequila sort of strapped to tequila and and lemonade or something you know strapped to his one of his um harness straps is what i'm trying to say with a straw he used to he used to hop and pop which meant he'd jump out of the top so 12 to fifteen thousand feet and rather than skydiving he'd pull his chute immediately sink down to earth getting drunk but i'm going to speed this up a bit now there's there's a leg but it is it's just quite something just to even be in this position in in your lifetime it's 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 fairly incredible um yeah as me looking like something out of a M bond film like moonraker like i'm the bad guy or something and uh so yeah there i am chatting with robin in one of our podcasts and i said robin did you, did you know this chap tom reed because he wrote this book, he spoke openly about his mental illness. Um, at the end of the book, you, you've got the impression that, that he's all happy and he's overcome it. And bang, then you hear that he threw himself out of an aircraft while it was flying above England. Landed on a football pitch. Obviously, throw when I say throw himself out, but I mean without a parachute. It it's just awful. Couldn't um, you know? I guess no one's going to know for real what goes on in someone else's head. But was that a case of he couldn't couldn't stand it any longer? The the, the mental anguish. We'll we'll talk more about that. You know who who's ever going to know? And Robin said, "Oh, you mean niche or niche?" I said, what, what, what are you on about? He said, Nish, that was his name. He, he wasn't called Tom Reed. He's actually called Charles Nish Bruce. And he's got the Queen's Gallantry Medal. So let's talk a bit about him, shall we? So Nish served with the Parachute Regiment, as I said, and then joined the SAS. Uh, there's a picture in the C-130, so in the Hercules. Um, got a, a newspaper article here. Let me see. Let's see if I can find it. Dun dun dun. Yeah, excuse the adverts fact of life now aren't they but how i fought to stop sas man suicide leap a woman pilot who watched an sas hero jump five thousand feet to his death from the cockpit of her plane yesterday gave him a draft gave a dramatic account of her struggle uh to save him just awful um the woman was uh had won the Women's Freefall Skydiving Championships. I'm guessing they were friends. Uh, it's kind of irrelevant for, for what we're talking about today, so I won't I won't dive into that any further. But let's just go back to the story. Um, served with the Red Devils. Let's have a book, look at a bit of their footage because this is the Paras Freefall Display Team. And unlike the Royal Marines, who I think is disbanded now, this I think the Red Devils are still going. If they are, folks, can you put it in the comments? Can I also say thank you to everyone who's joined the Patreon recently? 
if you haven't joined the Patreon, could you please do so? It's $1.99 a month, folks, and it allows us to bring you stories like this where we don't just talk about guns and killing. We put the mental health aspect in. We put the soldiers' rights aspect in. And they're getting a hammer in, aren't they, at the moment, what with all this Northern Ireland stuff. So let's have a look. Can't play you too much of this because it's not my film, but for commentary purposes, we're allowed to play a bit of it. It's an absolutely spectacular video. It, it must be 4K. But look, there they are embarking. The one that looks like the Hercules, doesn't it? If that's not the Hercules, can you put it below? Bit of wingsuit. <laughs> incredible footage look at the backdrop it's just stunning it was stuff like this in fact it was watching point break that made me think i've, I've got to do this you know in my one life this is something that i want to do there they are there's the boys look um making the love heart is it i don't know the name of this formation but whatever it is they're uh, they're doing a good job of it their trademark red. Practicing the wind tunnel. Look at that for an image. Isn't it incredible? Just to have that image in your photo collection. You can see why guys do this, can't you? Living life to the full. So. Excuse me. So. Yes, 22nd um, SAS. Um, Nish was in 7 Squadron, which is, was the same one Andy McNabb, was it? Was it B, sorry, B Squadron, 7 Air Troop. Um, there he is, there's our man in his Red Devil's gear, looking quite young there. But we've got the world is your oyster at that age, isn't it? Andy McNabb, immediate action. This is They're in the same troop together. I think Andy McNabb wrote a book called Seven Troop. And he speaks very highly of, of Niche, Andy McNabb, um, as one of his heroes. There we are. There's also uh, Niche far right. I'm not sure of the other two gentlemen, apologies, but that's Frank Collins, I believe, second person in um, from the left. And Frank also killed himself. So there's something going on here, folks, isn't there? You know, there's something that, that, that needs to be talked about. Dun, dun, dun. Let me just move on. Um, Five and five B. There we go. Bob Shepherd was in B Squadron in my podcast the other day. This podcast, if you haven't seen it, he talked about parachuting into the South Atlantic during the Falklands, as did Robin, Robin Horsfall, and also as did Nish. Or Nish, sorry if I'm pronounced pronouncing the name wrong. Um Operation Mikado was to take out these things. The su are they called Super Entender? Uh, 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 jets? Um, they These guys were going to go ashore. Was it in a submarine? Then I believe it was going to drop them off. They were going to swim ashore, attack these aircraft, and then try to escape to Chile, which I think probably... In hindsight, even the SAS would, would agree was probably quite a suicide mission or certainly a, a, a capture mission, isn't it? Nish was um, involved in Northern Ireland where he got his Queen's Gallantry Medal. They're in a shoot, they're 
the SS, um, his his team are in a shootout with the IRA. And this chap here, Al Slater, who I, I, I think I've got this photo right, guys. Please let me know, for God's sake, if I've got it wrong. Sometimes you get photos in a search engine and it's got the wrong name on. I can edit it out, <laughs> always edit it out if we get to that. But Al Slater was killed in that contact. And I know these guys were the best of friends. There's Nish in, in later life. Uh, he went on to bodyguard for Jim Davison to protect wildlife with um, David Sterling. So the founder of the SES, he went down there to uh, Kenya to protect the wildlife against poachers. I'm guessing he 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 did body bodyguard work. Probably really boring compared to what he what what the life you're used to in the regiment. And of course, he started the skydive project, which he wanted to be the first man to skydive from space. And then, of course, his breakdown set in and all this didn't come around. It, it, incredibly sad. And it just came around kind of all of a sudden and there was no real understanding of what caused it because it, sometimes in these cases there isn't. A lot of there was a lot of talk of yeah, well this is what servicemen go through when they see stuff in war, blah blah blah. And yeah, all these stuff are factors, but there's obviously a big difference between uh, being traumatized, having um, depression, anxiety, chronic anxiety, and feeling like you want to end it all. That these these are all very serious, but. To be where I was and where um, Nish was is to be severely psychotically ill or psychiatrically unwell. It's it's kind of another thing again. I mean, it could be triggered by something as simple as something in your diet. Or a combination of that and alcohol and say perhaps stress. These are these are all these un, unknowns. While living in Chamonix one day, he suffered a nervous breakdown and attempted to murder his girlfriend with a pair of scissors and somebody fortunately pulled him off. Um, eight years this, this these episodes went on for, which just must have been awful for anybody. But imagine someone so active and imagine what you're going to lose. You're going to lose your pilot license. You're going to use, lose your ability to skydive, all, all this kind of stuff. Um, just, you know, just awful. And on top of that, like many veterans, Nish was no doubt carrying uh, post-traumatic stress. Um, his ashes were scattered. In a, in a memorial skydive by his son and his former colleagues, which is quite touching. There's a funny page I found a, a write-up, I think it was by Nish himself on the internet, talking about skydiving, talking about how they upset the Arabs, I believe it was, or certainly some characters in the Muslim world, because the pilot was a Muslim who took these boys up and of course, gas expands at altitude. And as these guys were letting, letting rip with farts, of course, it was stinking the plane out. And the pilot, the Muslim pilot, actually brought the plane down and, and, and refused to take them anymore. Another story about a gorgeous blonde woman who said, can I come up in the, you know, can I come and film you in the plane? And they said, yeah, but we're going bollocky buff. You know, we're going stark bollock naked. So if you want to come up, got to get your kit off, love. And she went, OK. <laughs> Apparently she was gorgeous. And then at the last minute, the pilot of the plane goes, fellas, we're overloaded. Someone's got to get out. So, of course, the skydivers aren't getting out because this is what they love. So it was goodbye, dear. There's also a touching, um, a touching page in the book where his 
brothers from the regiment come and visit him in hospital. And you get this, um, you get this thing with servicemen. They're quite, they're quite direct and quite straight. And they take things like that on the chin. They don't pussy around with their words like uh, sort of possibly many of our civilian counterparts would. And I mean no offence, but, you know. Um, uh, and these guys rock up at the hospital. And they're like, all right, wanker. <laughs> Which is sometimes what you need when, you know, you need a friendly face. And that's about it, folks. Um, I was going to finish by reading you the last paragraph in a book because it's quite touching. But do you know what? In honour to, to Nish, rest in peace, I'll let you buy the book. And I'll thoroughly recommend it. Thank you for watching. Hello, friend. I hope this finds you well. My name's Chris Thrall. I'm a former... Royal Marines Commando and I fought my way back from chronic trauma and addiction to live, work and travel in 80 countries across all seven continents, achieving all of my dreams and goals along the way. Now I pass my simple system on to other people, but I can only help you if you like and subscribe. So please do so because you get one life and if you live it right, one is enough.